sale. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we present the WBC Strongweight Championship of the World from Shibanaki Productions in association with Promotora Armaga King Vision, SET Pay Per View, and the Corona. This band is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, Presidente Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Juan Jose Torres Landa, along with La Comisión de Box de Distrito Federal. Presentando a los jueces, introducing to you the judges at ringside, Victor Cervantes, Martin Denken, and Helaxio Perez, and referee is Lupe Garcia. All right, fans, here we go with the WBC Strongweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing, El Campeonato Peso Paja, del CMB de 12 rounds. Presentando al retador en la esquina azul, presenting to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring, wearing white trunks, y representando Mérida, Yucatán, Mexico. Pesando 47.5 kilogramos, he weighed in at 104 and 3 quarter pounds. Con un record de 37 victorias, 14 derrotas y un empate, tiene 27 victorias por knockout. His record includes 37 wins, 14 losses, one draw, with 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing tonight's challenger, ranked the WBC number two light flyweight in the world, aquí está el retador numero dos peso mosca ligero en el mundo, Javier Candelita Vargas. Y al campeón en la esquina roja, his opponent across the ring, the defending champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and green trim. Originario de Cuernavaca, Morelos, y ahora representando la ciudad de México. Con un peso de 47.7 kilogramos, he weighed in at the strong weight limit of 105 pounds. Tiene un sobresaliente récord de 37 victorias, sin derrota, con 27 victorias por knockout. His outstanding record includes 37 wins, no losses, with 27 big wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the undefeated WBC strawweight champion of the world, tonight making the 12th defense of his title, demos la bienvenida al campeón, el sensacional e invicto, Ricardo Vinito Lopez. Aquí está el referee Lupe García. Bien, señores, ya platicamos a los vencedores. Recuerden que los vales son puntos menos y puede llegar hasta la descalificación. Hagan una buena pelea, sobre todo limpia, y que ganen mejor. Suerte los dos. Before we move on, we want to report that Luis Santana is semi-conscious in the infirmary here at Plaza de Toros in guarded condition. Semi-conscious, guarded condition. We'll update you as soon as we get something. And right now, we're getting set for the next fight. Sorry. And that's a sad commentary because every boxing rule says an ambulance should be pleasant and a, a hospital notified as soon as the guy's in that condition. I saw Davey Moore die one night oh. just doing that in one of our fights. Well, uh, certainly uh, put a pall over this uh, outdoor arena. It has numbed us, but... We're now into the WBC Strawweight Championship. Lopez Vargas. Lopez uh, told us that Vargas Southpaw style poses no problems. In fact, of Lopez's 12 title defenses, including tonight, six are Southpaw. Lopez never knocked down. The big thing he wants to get at Gonzalez and Carvajal someday. He's a sharp, classy boxer with good combinations. But I'll tell you what, this Vargas, he's a determined mean look on his face and I think he came to fight tonight he's a rough looking guy you know he's, he's tough and he's rough and he's used to coming in and, and taking punishment but uh, well, I, I tell you what Lopez is a master boxer he just started out and you can see the class no, they're both wearing white trunks so Lopez white with the green and red trim he's now on the right of your screen Vargas white with the black trim along the belt already uh, Vargas commenting that uh, he was butted. I didn't see the butt. Yeah, they kind of just clashed heads a little bit. I'll tell you, during the interviews, Lopez, who seems to be in perfect shape, said that his body was starting to betray him. They were thinking about retirement within the next couple years. I know about bodies betraying him. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Lopez, very calm and composed. Uh, he 
is Julio Cesar Chavez's protege. He's also extremely popular here in Mexico. 27 knockouts and 37 wins. Tremendous power for his weight class. But he's not a one-punch fighter, he told us. He relies on the accumulation of punches. Well, he's throwing very crisp combinations. They're all landing, and they have nice power with them. He likes the right hand and says that against lefties, he likes to go left and then shift right. Lopez the champion. He's got the green and gold trim and red stripes down the side of his trunk. He said he's not going in for the knockout. No idea what's going to happen. He says knockouts are circumstantial. Very philosophical. You can't predict the knockout, but he feels very prepared. Feels he can knock out Marquez. Oh, I don't know. There's a few fighters I can normally predict the knockout. The opponents uh, are less than uh, stellar. Okay. Well, this kid's been very tough, though. I mean, he, he hasn't been knocked out a lot. Uh, Vasquez, and uh, he's here to fight. It may be the same kind of fight that we had in the first fight, where a superior champion um, is just left to fight a long and dreary fight. Well, Vargas with a wild miss there with the left. 13 years of light flyweight. His first fight tonight is a strawweight. But it's also close. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. Vargas has fought with the best. Very confident. But they invented paperweights yet. The wind is blowing. Los ya son gran precioso, pero es que cuando vires con el gancho, que vires, tú vires hacia acá, él queda aquí, tira gancho derecho o upper derecho, pero sé cómo me entendí, me entiendes? Sí. Instructions about how to hook with the left, and when the guy turns away from it, to come back with the right, either a hook or an uppercut to the body. Just technical stuff. Very uninterested here. They're just uh, surgical about the thing. See this butt, Bobby. You saw it. You call it. Well, you know, it, it was just coming in. Uh, the, the short guy, Vargas, got to come in. And that's what happened. He came in, and the champion went to the body, ducking his head down, and he walked kind of right into it. You watch yeah. it again. You see it just bang. Yeah, yeah. That's a better view. I think. I think you see it better there. It's ironic because just as you said, have they invented paperweights yet? We had a gust of wind that blew all my notes, <laughs> and you were referring to weight division, obviously. Uh, light oh, flyweight and yeah. control weights. <laughs> Good one, Bobby. Paper right. weights is next. Absolutely. Who knows? Round two, WBC Strawweight Championship. Vargas confident because of his experience. He feels he can take a punch. He wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lopez. You know, Lopez is talking to him. He keeps talking to him when he gets in close. Further information on Luis Santana. He's going to be okay. Great news, but they're going to do a brain scan as a precaution. Let's hope he's all right. Let us pray. The brain scan is the very least they have to do, and they got to do it to me. It's uh, all the more reason they should have just stopped it and gotten them right out of here immediately. Absolutely. There's, there's laws now that you have to have an ambulance present. I'll bet you everything I got, there wasn't an ambulance here tonight. And this place is so big, we're probably taking 20 minutes to get to it. Especially with a traffic jam. Very tough to maneuver in and out of this uh, venue. Well, let's not let what happened before detract from the interest that's going on right now because Ricardo is taking a part. Uh, Javier Vasquez, uh, Vas Vasquez has not had a moment yet where he's come on and shown anything. Vargas told me that he thought he had the much better chin, which he's obviously going to need here, and that that was going to make the difference in the later round. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to take a lot of punches at this rate if he keeps getting hit like that. Well, he keeps punching low, and the referee has not said a word yet to Vasquez. Vargas, a southpaw. He's committed to taking this title. Very determined as he comes forward on the champion, Ricardo Lopez, who's undefeated his 12th title defense. 37 and 0, 27 knockouts. Very classy looking young man out of Puerto Vaca, Mexico. Less than a minute to go in round two. He's a great kid to talk to, also. Very polite, quiet, just very nice. They butted heads again by accident, and there's a cut on Vargas's face. Just uh, below the left sideburn, there's blood. Is that blood? Left yes. sideburn? Left sideburn on Lopez Lopez. on the front, I believe, on the face yes. of Vargas. And it's streaking now down the left side 
of uh, Lopez's face. Boy, he is getting beat up. It's only the second round, and he looked like he ran into hand grenades. You see a little cut over the eye. I believe the left eye of Vargas. Very hard to tell because he's got the hair coming down his face. But I believe you'll see blood there. Heavy right hands by Lopez. That blood should not bother him that much. It's not really into the eye. It's coming down the side of the face. But uh, Vargas staggered. Vargas staggered. But Vargas trying to spread that blood around. Yeah, it's, all, yes. <laughs> it's all over Lopez. Vargas is corner just told him you've got him stopped now. You, all you got to do is press on. Let's look at the headbutt again. This is the second one. Right oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. And let's take another look because we have these wonderful cameramen gives us exactly what we're looking for. Keep your eye on the head of Lopez. There he Ooh. goes. Oh, he came down and up right into his hey, eye. Hey, Billy go. Yeah, Vargas is cut over the eye. His cut is on the side of his head. And, and Vargas is corner. I can't believe it. Said you got him stopped now. You got him standing straight up. And I just go in there and take care of business. I can't believe that. Round three scheduled for 12. Round two highlighted by some butts and some cuts. Now Vargas sensing the urgency going right at Lopez. Lopez remaining composed. And doubling up on the left is Lopez. He turns that right hand in beautifully. He just stops on a dime. Bang, right down the pipe as you should with a southpaw. Now Vargas coming back. Vargas just standing right in and lunging forward. The tough kid. Oh boy, is he tough. Nice block of a right-hand uppercut by Vargas. And remember, Vargas is the attacker here. He's coming after him. It's just that he can't pay that kind of price for long. Lopez counter-punching. Oh, 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 two low blows. The referee right there, not, not a word. Unbelievable. Lupe Garcia of Mexico not saying a thing to Vargas, and that was so obvious. Not a word, not even a hint. The cut on the side of Lopez head, bleeding pretty freely, but not a problem with the vision. Ignacio Beristain, the cut man, and not a problem with stopping him. Cut on the side of the head, forget about it. He can't good, get hurt. good right hand by Vargas, who's just pulling his way in. So appropriate. Nice right by Vargas as he was turning away. I'll tell you what, he said he was going to, he thought the fight was going to end in a knockout, and that his ultimate goal was to fight the winner of Gonzalez Carbajal. He must love punishment. Now Lopez, oh. combination missing with the left. Vargas has to take advantage, but doesn't do anything. Because he's stunned. I'll tell you what, you got to give Vargas some credit. He can hit with everything and just doesn't even take a backward step if he can help it. Well, he just got rocked at Vargas. And he's in a little bit of trouble right now, but he keeps coming forward. Holding and hitting. Look at that slooping <laughs> by Vargas. Yeah. Pretty nifty. I've never seen somebody's uh, boxing shoes come undone like that. Shoelace uh, undone. Lopez, left foot. Normally, they, in like, I know in Atlantic City, New Jersey, when we fight, they make you tape them. The oh, you make, check, yeah. I, makes you tape them. Most places they do. I've Obviously never, not the case here. I've never seen anybody not tape. I mean, I, I, it's been, well, since I've been in boxing, the 50s or so. So, <laughs> so this is just some place where they don't tape. <laughs> what else are we going to see? Another, the, the home of the WBC. Time called ruptured shoelace. Round three continues, and look at this. Lopez just spinning Vargas around like a top end. He's really penetrating. If you look at Vargas' eye, he's got cut above it. There's absolutely no blood coming out. It's just open and just sitting there. Is he human? I don't know, but I tell you one thing. He keeps hitting low, and uh, the referee keeps ignoring him. Meanwhile, Lopez Vasquez, is singing words. Yeah, Vasquez is so short that he puts in those punches. There it is again, right there, right on the cup. I'll tell you what, Bertie, they weren't too upset about Santana getting in the back of the head. I guess this is going to be nothing by comparison. <laughs> there it is again. Lopez airing it out and really punishing Vargas's face. Well, that's got to take an effect on Lopez pretty soon. You know, those things hurt. But showing no effects. Lopez just bouncing around on the balls of his feet. Oh, oh, oh by oh, Lopez. That was one uh, payback. That's a payback. 
action, little fight. Little guys. They are tiny. Necesitamos tirar más izquierda para que ya lo tienes para 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 All right, let's take a look at the way that this little Vargas is tough and the way he punches. Look at that, right on the butt. He's a southpaw, he's using the right hook. It's his most effective weapon. And if you get it around, you'll see there's the low blow contest starting again. Here is, here's what he loves so well. Nice right, a little south of the border, as we are south of the border. Yeah, yeah that was the wrong guy. That was the guy that threw it, but the guy that had been receiving it has been Lopez. A foul marred fight. We go into round four, delay. They forgot to put the mouthpiece into Vargas's mouth. Latina. By the way, uh, Santana being examined by a neurologist, two doctors have confirmed that he was never totally unconscious. That's the latest word I get. So does that mean he doesn't win the title? I'm not even going to touch that. Yeah, they, they, they are now doing a uh, cover-up. Well, certainly our, our spirits dampened by the situation that took place in the last fight. This fight moves on round four for the WBC Strawweight Championship. I guarantee you by tomorrow morning it will be a complete clean. It will be a, a Mexican water game. Everything will be clean and your eyes will have deceived you. Vargas continues to come oh, forward. Low blow. Oh, low blow. Even Lopez uh, indicating to the referee who does nothing. Referee gave a little quick warning, but obviously this is not a referee who wants to get involved too much. That's because uh, Lopez, for the first time, grabbed themselves and said, hey, listen. Lupe Garcia of Mexico is the third man in the ring. Vargas keeps coming, keeps coming. Boy, like rainwater, he's there. I'll tell you what, he's not a big puncher. He's kind of like Chinese war no. torture. He's just all over you. He says this is the most important fight of his 13-year career, and he's acting it out. Look, two. Low blow. Three low blow. It's a low blow combination. It's a festival. The referee right there. I guess he doesn't think. I don't know what he thinks. Two more. Well, he's so used to being south of the border. Yeah. I would love to have a punch counter just for low blows in this fight. Tonight, it might break the meter. <laughs> Here's a good left hand by Lopez. And Vargas is trying to use that cut as target practice, but Lopez not giving him a chance. But his face is beginning to bluff up. I'll tell you what, they're keeping some pace. Vargas doesn't want to take a backward step. Lopez is happy to punish him on the win. But to his credit, uh, Vargas is getting some punches through. It is a frenetic tempo to this fight. Non-stop punching. This is what the Mexican crowd likes. And you know what? Slowly, just slowly, Vargas is turning this. Because he's no longer just getting smashed. He's doing a lot of smashing on the side, and the other guy's looking weary. So it's not a one-way meeting. No, it's, it's uh, although I have Lopez winning the rounds, it's, it's getting by less and less in the margin department. Well, I'll tell you what, the last one I gave even, I hate to give even rounds, they were just both going at it so hard. Except for the low blows, I mean, you know, it's, it's just an overwhelming force seems to be coming in at Lopez. Boy, the two guys come. Lopez that sends Vargas back a step or two and the bell sound. Coming up next, our main event as we go to the dressing room of the WBC IBF light flyweight champion Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez now just moments away from his third get together with Michael Carvajal hoping for a repeat of the rematch when Gonzalez won the upset split decision. Carvajal's first loss. Gonzalez whose first job was in his parents' small butcher shop called La Chiquita here in Mexico City has come a long way since those days. Tonight he'll be center stage in front of his uh, many adoring fans at Plaza de Toros. We 
get ready for round five. Vargas lost to both headliners tonight to Gonzalez in 88, TKO round five, Gar Carvajal in 91, a 12 round decision. So he's got a lot of experience. Oh, combination by Lopez. Lopez now all over Vargas once again. I think his corner sees, hey, you're giving this guy some momentum here. He's starting to pick up, and even though you're smashing him, he's still coming on. He's landing some very hard shots, and those low blows are going to take it out of you. You better start fighting and stop this guy. Oh, what a shot. Oh, a right thrust by Lopez, but this Vargas is a concrete hit. Wow, what a tough kid this is. I'll tell you what, I don't know how his whole career couldn't be fighting like this because I don't know how he's still standing. I agree with you, Bobby. I don't know how a man has a full career in fighting like this. Vargas, his face all puffed up, his uh, head cut. I mean, he is a complete mess, but he still comes forward. There appears to be a cut on top of Lopez's head yes. as well. No, that's been there for that's a while. The old, is that the old one? Yeah, that's the old Panama Canal. I thought it was a little lower than that. Nah, it's right on the, on the part, and, and it's uh, big. It bleeds sure. like a... You can see it all the way from here, pretty good distance. I mean, is it an open wound, or is it just yeah, a no, it's an open, blood? No, 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 it's an open wound. It's been there for a while. It's, well, a, it's a kind you got to shave the head before you can sew them up, and that makes it look ugly the next day. I thought the initial cut was much lower. Yeah, that's it. It's a little misleading because the, the blood is streaking down the side of his face. It does look like it's a lower one, but it's near the top of the head. Very unusual. I see this is the kind of round. Oh, oh, look at these shots by Lopez, all with the right. Lopez turned south one, did it all with his right hand. Now a left hand by Lopez that sends Vargas's head spinning back. Well, Vargas said his oh, chin is going to make the difference. Amazing boy, that boy. Vargas is standing. And fighting back. And he says, come on, give me more. Look at this. He says, come on, because I can't come forward anymore. I'm tired. Wow. A minute left in the fifth round. The punishment is brutal by Ricardo Lopez. What a chance. Right on the target. Vargas thought he was going to be physically this strong with the two because he normally fights a little heavier than this, but I'll tell you what, these combinations and punches, he's going to be weak by the end of tonight. Yeah, his first fight is a straw wing. That just grazed. That could have been the end. It doesn't seem like any one punch is going to be the end of, uh, of Vargas because, boy, he's tough. My hat's off to him. A gutty performance here by little Javier Vargas, who stands 5'1 and a half, 104 pounds, 30 years old from Merida, Mexico, which is the capital of the state of Yucatan. Well, his only world title shot to Michael Carvajal. This is the fight of his life. Look at these shots he's taken, then he answers back. Oh, look at this right hand by Lopez, and Vargas just laughs in his face. Unbelievable. He's laughing on the outside and crying on the inside. <laughs> Those got, got that right. Those got to hurt. A good round for Lopez, a painful one for Garcia. Bobby, there's some, some rounds that are such beatings, whether the guy goes down or not, that sometimes I'm compelled to give him a 10 8 round. And you know what? That was a 10 8 round for me. That was a beating. All right, here's the Academy Award of Acting in Boxing. This is when you're getting killed and you act like it didn't even bother you. This is acting in the Elliot Kazan manner. This is De Niro, and uh, this is every boxing movie you ever saw. Watch this punishment. Raining blows, raining blows, and here comes the acting. Come on, come on, that didn't hurt me. Well, I'll tell you why I wouldn't make it a 10-8 round myself is because here you see him taking a lot of punishment. He's getting hit with everything, but he's never non-combative at all. No. Never really, he's, truly he's, staggered. He's always throwing punches and trying, so I still give him 10-9, and, and even that, uh, he's, he's, he's digging himself a hole, but he is trying. I don't think so bad. I got a 49-46 because I'm giving him a lot more credit, apparently, than you are, because he is <laughs> making the fight. He's coming forth. That one round was just went completely the other way. He was getting momentum and he just stopped. Round six, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Incredible that Vargas, the challenger, is still standing. 13-year veteran. He's been in there with the best and the experience is showing. Look at this exchange. In the whole beginning of the round is Vargas. The whole beginning of the round is him chasing and punching and everything. And unless Lopez decides to stop and really fight, this guy's taking around. Yeah, but on his way in, he absorbs an awful 
lot. I think that yeah, yeah, Bobby. You know, it's, it, you know, you can argue all day long. It's a very, it's a very interesting fight. That's what we can say. Oh, sure. Entertaining to the fans. Blood soaked trunks. The compounded by the fact that they're white brings it out even more from the cuts earlier in the fight. A lot of low blows and head butts in this particular fight. Remember, Mexican judges love this kind of valor, this kind of go forward against the machine guns kind of uh, valor that the Mexicans have. They love this. And this kid is winning the heart of the judges. I'm truly amazed with all the punishment that Vargas has taken that his cut doesn't even trickle. Yeah, I am too. I am too. Two judges from Mexico, one from the U.S. That's Marty Dinkin, Galacio Perez, and Victor Cervantes from Mexico. If I got to guess, Bobby, they put in some solutions into the cut that, that sealed it. Uh, not exactly legal anymore. One cell solution? You can get by with that. Yeah. Let's not say it out on the air. <laughs> that, that there are people that put it in. Round six continues a little slower, which is understandable at the frantic pace of the last few rounds. Constant action in round four. Great round for Lopez in round five. Damaging round for uh, Vargas. But now uh, it looks like Lopez is trying to collect himself and get back into the fray. Oh, nice. nice by Vargas. Nice. nice. Good defense by Lopez. Yeah, nice. Well, I'll tell you, just a one, he's got a one gear, just a one dimensional forward, 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 does not want to go backwards, Vargas. Yeah, he's in first also. He's, he's in that rough gear. He's not in third. He's Beautiful he doesn't under move by Lopez any land. He doesn't slide in though. He just walks one foot in front of the next. Just coming in. Again, just pounding to the head of Vargas, and Vargas does not flinch. And keeps coming forward. Lopez not punching particularly hard this round. Not as effective as the last one. At least he seems to take a round off. Oh, he's low, low, by Vargas. low. Right in front of the record. Out of the thigh, not much damage, fortunately, for Lopez. Well, coming up next at Plaza de Toros, our featured attraction, Michael Carbajal, looking to win back his WBC IBF light flyweight titles from Chiquita Gonzalez. Here's Carbajal back in his dressing room about nine months after losing that split decision to Gonzalez in Englewood, California. He will not be the crowd favorite here in Mexico, but he is beloved back in his hometown, Phoenix, Arizona, where he has given back to the community by revamping an old church on 9th Street, renaming it the 9th Street Gym. Michael Carvajal getting set for the main event against Chiquita Gonzalez. They're telling him he doesn't want anymore. He's all yours. All you got to do is go get him. Well, this is a relentlessly optimistic corner that Marquez has got. I mean, they're telling him he's way ahead, and all he needs to do is stay right on top of him. They must all be related to him. <laughs> well, they're sure pushing. They're not a realist in the crowd. Vargas refuses to go down despite the assault of oh. Lopez. Big right hand by Lopez. Again, Vargas remains on his feet. He really has an incredible chin. He doesn't move much. It doesn't snap when he gets hit. And he just walks right through. His balance, he doesn't even have his feet under him sometimes and doesn't get dropped. It's amazing. He's got that low center of gravity. Five, one and a half, 104. The little fire plug. Vargas, 37, 14 and one. 27 knockouts. Turn pro in 81. He's 30. Lopez undefeated, 37 and 0, 27 KOs. His 12th defense of the WBC strawweight title. 105 pounders. It's great to, for once to have the focus on the little guys rather than the higher weight classes. We are seeing tremendous skills here in front of us. The higher weights could never hold this type of pace. It's just impossible. Feverish pace. Look at these shots. Combinations, uppercuts, the whole repertoire, Lopez. But yet, Marquez undaunted. He's taken some kind of punishment. He just got rattled. Nothing. Marquez shakes his head, says, come on, pour it on, give me more. He is a determined man. Keep the punches up, says uh, yeah. Garcia. I don't speak language, but I can tell. Look at this. 
assault by Lopez. A barrage. Vargas bouncing off the ropes. And still trying and firing back. Stays right in front of him. Doesn't even look to hide. Some guys would run out of here, but not Vargas. I'll tell you what, first time I saw him take a step back on his own. He's getting a little tired. The accumulation is really building up now. So maybe he's human after all. It might appear that way. Well, I'll tell you what. Not since Jake LaMotta have I ever seen a guy so willing to take fun of and refusing to go down. This is just a study in how tough the Mexican fighters are over the years. There's no question about that. What a study in courage, even though he's getting destroyed here, Javier Vargas. Coming up to 20 seconds remaining in round seven. Lopez, fresh on his feet, dancing around. Vargas comes right at him, hoping, praying that maybe one punch might get through to Lopez. But you gotta wonder what's on those punches. Simple. Ahora otra que vuelva a tener aquí Vargas que la van a parar Vargas. Cuando se pare si no tira golpe lo voy a parar la pelea. Very important just then. The referee came up and said, when you start this next round, if you don't fight back, I'm stopping the fight. That's very important. The referee just said, I'm stopping this fight if you don't fight back. And this is what he's talking about. Bobby, there was once five fights with Sugar Ray Robinson and Jake LaMotta. They were all like this, with Jake LaMotta being on the, on the tough side. Yeah, he was always like that. He would even hang his head out there, as this kid has, as a target, to, so he can get some chances to get punches in after he gets hit. Look how many land right on target. Look at that. Look at that. That's five, six, seven, um, eight. It's just incredible. It's the same quality that a superior boxer, which Sugar Ray Robinson was, against an incredibly tough guy, Jake Lamotta was. Round eight, total domination by that man, the champion, Ricardo Lopez. Well, thus far, this night could be entitled Bloodfest in the bull ring, the way things have gone. The WBC Strawweight Championship on the line. Lopez in total charge. Let's see if Vargas answers back. And it's a night of surprises, because each time we thought it was just going to be a walkover, it's turned out to be a very tough fight. Do we have another shutout being pitched here tonight? I, I don't have any shutout. Bobby probably does. I, I gave him a lot of credit in the middle. Right now, he hasn't won the last three or four rounds. So I have a 69-64. I'm sure Bobby has about four or five points more than that. No, 70-63. I have a shutout. I haven't done anything with 10-8 rounds, so I'm only ahead of you by a little bit. And, you know, in all fairness to Vargas, as tough as he's been, he's just absorbed too much in each round. And even though the margin of winning early got closed a little bit, Starting to be another runaway. Now the fans beginning to sense something here as Lopez looks to move in and finally nail this one away. But Vargas won't cooperate. That referee is trying to stop this fight. That referee is right there. All he wants to see is no exchange back and it's all over. Lupe Garcia watching so closely the eyes of Vargas. Vargas wild. Vargas so tired. He has nothing on his punches. Just whipping them into the wind. Lopez with the right hand. But Vargas oh, is doing his best. To any time now. Any time. Yeah, uh, here it is. That's it. So you can't say he didn't warn him. No, he did. Lupe Garcia with a good move here. And I want to say, I believe that the, the disastrous events of the last fight inflicted the decision on Judge because yeah. I saw Suleiman motion, hey, if this keeps going, stop it. That thought process was definitely instilled because of what happened before. Yeah, absolutely. And it was on his mind, and I'm sure it was right out there. I, and I think Suleiman ordered it. I mean, they say, hey, we can't we can't afford two disasters in a row. We looked bad last time. <laughs> One disaster enough. So they stopped the fight 133 of round eight with uh, Tony Lopez just inflicting incredible punishment on the head and body of Javier Vargas, who performed valiantly despite the defeat. But enough is enough. So there he is, Javier Vargas, who will fall to 37, 15, and 1. We'll take a look at a whole bunch of the stoppage. Yeah, here's a stoppage that for some people might say was too soon, but it really was all academic, I think. He was not really in the fight, and he was taking a lot of punishment. 
tremendous chin, big heart, good condition fighter, but just too much. And again, coming off what happened with Santana, I think they did the right thing. Uh, the only other flip side of it is, as you watch him take all this punishment, here's a man with a lot of pride who wants to finish on his feet, and sometimes that's taken away from him by the referee. But again, just clean punches, and even when he offered up punches now, Steve, they were missing, missing badly. So a gallant try by Javier Vargas, but Lupe Garcia said that is enough. Well, here you get one more look at it from, again, another angle, and the punches of Lopez are going down the middle. They're landing, ripping the uppercuts in there. It's kind of a token wave from Vargas. He's really done now. He's been beaten, and he's beaten, man. And save him the fight another day, because he was actually a lot of fun to watch. It was just a matter of time for Ricardo Lopez. Makes his 12th title defense. We are set for the official time. Let's go up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Damas y caballeros, tenemos el tiempo. Un minuto, 33 segundos en el round número 8. El referee Lupe García terminó la pelea. Ladies and gentlemen, with the time of 1 minute, 33 seconds. In round number 8, the referee stops the contest. El ganador por knockout technical. The technical knockout winner, Ricardo Finito Lopez. So, Ricardo Lopez retains his WBC strawweight title as he makes his 12th defense and proves his record to 38-0. Lopez would love nothing more than to move up and wait someday, meet either Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez or Michael Carvajal.